Isn't that great? <laughs> this is my personal squash board. That so is. Actually, it, Zoom allows you to have a background so you can load a picture onto it. That is, I love that. Yeah, I love that. I have not tried that yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my background now. Now that you tell me. That's yeah, awesome. it's very cool. And uh, the only problem is when you move fast, you can see sort of a lag of the background. Oh, yeah. Yep. Now I know it is. Yep. Yep. I noticed it now. That's kind of cool. I mean, people are spending a lot of money on interior design to make sure they have these really cool, unique backgrounds. That's, that's kind of a cheap way to get around it. I love it. Yeah, definitely. I want to put a big picture of uh, Santorini, Greece behind me. People think I'm a world traveler. You can do that. <laughs> they, they, yeah, if you can have it moving, it'd be really cool. But I don't think they've gotten to the moving part yet. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, good to see you again. Great call Monday. I don't know how much time we have. I, I know we kind of moved this thing around a little bit. We got 20 minutes, half an hour? Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it was a good call on Monday. How'd you, I don't know how you felt about it, but I thought, it was, I thought that was phenomenal. definitely a little more structure. People have great input. I'm, I really enjoy, I mean, I enjoy everybody, but um, Carl was, I don't know his background. I'm going to read up on him, but. Um, he's brilliant. Um, he's yeah, he's so traveled. He knows everybody in sports. He's amazing. And uh, maybe in addition to the, I know you sent out the list. I don't, I'm not adding to your plate, but at some point, maybe have, this could be a good delegation. Um, brief bio and everybody because i think your your introductions about who they are are great um i had no idea that to john who, who's the producer for the today show uh that's a uh, bill bill great i mean bios of these people are pretty impressive i mean really impressive i gotta say yeah. I, i'm 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 honored and humbled by you and everybody else it amazes me really, really yeah great. it's a been it's been awesome this is just to kind of network and hear different perspectives so if i'm uh if I'm quiet, it's not because I'm not engaged. I'm quiet because I, I just love hearing these other perspectives of these folks that are, you know, coming at it from all, all angles, which is great. Yeah, I'm so tired of hearing myself talk about this stuff. So it's really <laughs> nice to hear everybody else talk about it. And, yeah, no, it's but, good. I th no, I think your input's good. You're a good listener. I think um, the calls are great. I, I think you keep them right, you know, keep them moving along. You know, the first one was a little long, you know, it was the first time we jumped on, so that's to be uh, expected. But I think they're getting tighter and tighter. Yeah, you know it is. we'll have a little bit more to talk about. I think uh, once we really break out to groups, uh, like that email I just sent, and uh, once we yeah. say, okay, so, you know, how did, how did the high school group go? How did the college group go? Where, you know, what are you right. doing with material and collateral and that kind of stuff? And there you go. You know, all that kind of stuff. We do have to have like a, a corporate image and um, that, that one liner. What do we do? And, uh, yeah. Uh, an elevated pitch that everybody knows by rope. Like, boom, exactly. And uh, then we go to, you know, when we go to talk to people, see what their input is and what their needs are. Right. One of the things I really think we have to do with uh, that last email I sent was get to get out to people and ask them, you know, what do you, what's your pain? Where, 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 where do you need help? And yeah. if you had, if we had a blank slate, a green field, tell us what you want to build there. Right. And, you know, if you get them talking, Especially now when we're about to start building the new site and apps, we can nail it and just say, you told us three months ago, you wanted something like this. We have this, but so much more. I love and, it. You know, so given, given all that, and I don't want to dig too much into your head because it's probably swimming with all this stuff going on, but just, just from your vantage point right now, where do you see the biggest revenue opportunity i'll stick to just pure money other than it just investing the angel stuff coming in but what do you see this thing rolls out and you're looking at this thing uh, kind of a five-year pro forma where do you see the biggest revenue ad uh, is it the esports thing is it where do you see the biggest opportunity i guess just point blank as what are you most excited about the direct revenue coming in is going to be three ways uh one is going to be advertising and that's going to be all based on who the advertisers are and how many eyeballs we can get Yep. It's very straightforward. Um, the, the reason why the, who the advertisers are is important is because if I get, let's say it's a volleyball player, they can, I can either show them an AT&T ad, which is a quarter cent per view, or I can show them a Mikasa or a Molten Ball ad, and that's worth a penny of you. Right. So to get the endemics, what they call it, uh, mm -hmm. is the most important thing because we get the endemics involved, then it all becomes really um, important both for the players, because they want to see the Mikasa ball. They don't want to see anything he had, right? Right. And, and uh, so that, that's really important. And the uh, yeah. um, other side is, you know, the, the supplier wants to show a specific 
uh, person a specific ad and a specific product. So that's number one important, but yep. it's also sort of cheating because we're also going to be selling stuff. Now, if I sell that Mikasa ball, it's a thirty dollar ball. Okay. I sell it and I make ten dollars. So instead of a penny for the view, I'm yep. making ten dollars for the ball. Not, Not really. really. Right. Balls, there's no markup on balls, so I'm lying. Um, but pretty much every other piece of sporting goods is roughly a thirty to fifty percent markup. So, so we'll have so you're 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 envisioning having a, a product sell piece of this as well. We actually have a company already set up and a site set up called Total Equips. Total Equip, I love it. And our sign, like the, we took the cue on Equips, and the cue yep. makes a, a little eclipse. So it's so cute. How oh, nice! Um, and uh, it just it fits and it, it works. And uh, we also yeah. just opened up another. I just started another uh, website um, called uh, UV United, and I think we're going to use that as the umbrella company for everything. Because yep. you know we started splitting off into music on Monday. I think it's really a big thing. I think if we if we can we can get into that side of the business, that side of the world, yep. it's really cool. But obviously, that's down the road. So right. UV United is to, to unite all of those different initiatives. Right now, it's all sports. Got it. Awesome. So we, I just had a really cool call with, um, it was with me and everybody else in the hype program that we just got into. Um, oh, with Uli Becker, who was the president of Reebok and the regional president of Adidas for like 30 years. Nice. Amazing, amazing conversation. And he said he wanted to be involved with us because our initials are the same as his. UV, Uli Becker. So it was pretty cool. Ah, I love it. <laughs> he was like, I got to talk to you guys. Huh? Yeah, yeah, come on, come on boy. Serendipity. I love it. Yeah, there's a lot of serendipity going on right now. It's incredible. Yeah. You know, my sister said it a couple years ago. She said, when the time is right, um, it'll, it'll be, a, um, what did she say? Um, it'll be gracious. Everything will come right to you, you know? Wow. Wow. It really like is. That. Like all of a sudden, every, everybody that I need is coming around me and falling so, into place. Incredible. So, okay. So there's two revenue drivers. One is sporting yep. goods. The other one is ad sales. The other yep. one is sort of a surprise from where it was 15 years ago when I first came up with the idea is uh, subscription revenue. Yep. But pretty much anyone can set up a subscription based um, training or coaching or video system right now. Yep. And um, they're selling it for anywhere from $5 a month to $200 a month. Right. And like $200 a month would be like a great, great trainer is taking on 30 or 40 or 50 people and they'll do a video. Then they'll send the video to the trainer and the trainer, trainer will correct them and that kind of stuff. $200 a month he gets. So yeah. and it's just incredible. These kids want to get into college and they want to be recruited. So they care. And the mom and dad will pay the money. So of that, we'll get between 20 and 30% of the subscription revenue per month. So if I have a million people paying $10 a month on the site, that's 10, that's $10 million a month for us. Yeah. And $120 million a year. So it's incredible big money and all we do is supply the connections. Right. I mean, it's a, real, it's a, a cool, cool business model. We'll also get into, this is where I want to, you know, I think you're going to be so important is that the other part that we're talking about is getting into video streaming mm -hmm. and both live and on demand. Mm -hmm. And the important part of that is I want to be able to give a school, a college or a high school, a package. And the package includes a computer if they don't have the right kind of computer, the software, and the software will connect the cameras that we also sell in the package yep. and uh, through either a wireless or through wires if they have connections. And from there, we have to supply the um, streaming system that, number one, stores their, um, the live video, but also streams that live out to their constituents. For like a travel team, for example, mom and dad want to go on to travel five, five hours to watch, and they can do that. And they can watch uh, live uh, on, yeah. their, on their computers or their uh, cameras or you know, their, their uh, phones or whatever. So that's something that can be very potent. Number one, we can sell those things. Uh, number two, we also get the subscription uh, business going. So uh, that, that's like, we have a plan A, and that, so that's plan B really. That's, you know, that's the year down the road. But right now what I care about is making sure that we have the best video system 
and we have the best technology right now for sports and video and uh, for eSports e also because that's part of our incubator and uh, that we can deliver live and uh, on-demand video with the current best technology that's currently available. Now, I don't know if you were um, listening to when we started talking about the next level, like a year and a half, two years down the road. Uh, one of my friends is like one of the brightest stars in the world with computers and technology, and particularly in audio and video. And he's talking about quantum computers and AI combining to um, provide video with almost zero lag, like a quarter of a millisecond lag. I did, yeah. You, I heard you mention that briefly, yeah. That's kind of that cool. That incredible. So um, if Andrew comes through with that kind of stuff, we're going to be, you know, we'll be able to license that to all these game guys because there won't be anything like it. And we'll be the first ones on the block with it and proven and in a system that is all sports. Right. So uh, I like the point that, you know, what, what people are making right now is that we're going to get back into sports in a couple of months. And people are going to be uh, – I'm already dying to get back into it. I went into a funk. When they, when they closed the courts and everything, I was like, oh, man. So I didn't yeah. work out for like a month. And I gained right. 10 pounds. I'm still losing the last five of them. But uh, I was really, like, depressed. And yeah. most of it was because I couldn't – I couldn't play. And uh, so as stupid as that sounds, there are a lot of me around. Oh, no doubt. I'm one of them. I was, yeah, I was definitely depressed in the funk. I tried the at home thing. Honestly, that I tried the at home. I tried, this is kind of cool. And then it got very tired very quick. I think I missed the whole, even just going to a facility to go work out was uh, yeah. something I missed. There, there is something to that. It's that rigor, that, 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 that whole thing. Getting up and getting dressed and going out and working out and coming back and taking shower. All that stuff is like part of a ritual. 100%. And, you know, and, and we are, you know, we are the gods in that. We are the, we're, we're the reason why you're doing it. That's right. And that's really, really important. I mean, we need to be able to do that to ourselves and for ourselves. Um, that's a, a big part of, I think, what we can offer as we're coming out of COVID is um, catch that excitement, catch that passion, and catch the coming back into it. Thing. And if we're launching in September, that's exactly the right time. Yeah. Yep. So I'm really excited about the timing of this. If we can do it right, if we can market it right and have the right stuff on it. Love it. I love it. So that's why I went to on Monday, I went to this thing about the seasonality of sports. I think if we're hitting the road with the fall sports in September, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's five or six sports that we can knock out of the box. Oh yeah. Easily. So I, I want to see that happen. And, uh, that guy, Uli, I was just speaking with, he said basically the same thing. He said, don't go on, don't worry about all your sports, but concentrate on, you know, he said one sport, but I'm thinking we can do it seasonally, like every two months come out with another set of sports for that yep. season, because those are the ones that are really going to start cracking. Uh, and that gives us a very manageable system to bring things out. You know, and I, that's what I'm, I'm, of course, concerned that I don't, I don't know what they – there's a saying in, in uh, the startup world and in business in general, um, don't boil the ocean, which means don't try too many things at once. Yeah. You know, right. so they sort of concentrate it as much as you can. So right. what we did is build, build a platform that can catch everything, but we can start off when we're rolling it out into those markets. We can very be very specific. You know, we have football, lacrosse, uh, field hockey, and the other, well, the other fall sports, basically. So we can hit those guys, and hopefully there is going to be a football season. Um, and assuming that COVID chills out and people don't die anymore, I think the more cases we have, you're getting. I'm like brain dumping on you right now. So to me, COVID, the more, more. I love it. I love it. Yes. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. So the more, uh, the more cases we have, and and when deaths uh, bottom out, which they are, they're starting to fall, but the cases keep going up. Uh, I had COVID back in January. Yep. So for me, ever since then, I'm like, uh, you guys got a problem. I don't. But um, it's something that has really <laughs> killed us in a lot of ways. And uh, in order to get our spirit back, we have right. to get back out. And we have to be a little more immortal. We can't be hiding under a rock. We have to say, you know, right. if we know we have a problem. And, of course, when we get a vaccine, it'll be a lot easier. But um, right. right now, we have to say, okay, now it's getting more manageable when you get it. 
they have that new drug that they're taking now that that yeah. seems to really stop the uh, progression of it. So yeah. you know that, that's why the deaths are falling, falling off because they're learning how to manage yeah. to it. Yeah, that was in the treatment of the, the more serious cases, people on ventilators and and ICU folks. That seemed pretty promising, I think. Horrible. So you know, now that we are they are starting to manage it and mitigate it, it's no longer that big thing. Now it's just like the flu. But you know, this goes back to um, the settlers when they first came over. They basically killed off half the half the uh, indigenous people because right. they were cold. They had colds. Yep. Yep. They brought diseases over before, and they couldn't. They had no way to. They, they, those things were new, and had no way to treat it. So they was totally foreign to them, and that was it. It devastated yeah. tribes. It was unbelievable. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, interesting stuff, man. I think. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you know when this thing does come back, you see even sports brands like um, I don't know if you saw Under Armour just came out with the the mask that um, is is meant for athletic training. That's a specific COVID mask to protect yeah. folks as they're working out. So even they're making, you know, technology shifts to make the transition from, you know, people going back from, you know, working, you know, quarantine situations, going to a, you know, a facility or trying to work out in a, in a safe environment, uh, making it safer, but still allowing folks to kind of, you know, work in communal spaces, which is a whole nother market, if you will, that whole transition back to, uh, public settings, I think, is a whole nother opportunity, really. Um, Absolutely, it is. You know, so I, I think this is right on the money. I think it's right on money. Yeah, I, I do too. I think if we can find a way to facilitate that, it'll be really helpful. Hundred percent. So, so you know, as as I'm thinking about you know things that I've done past life, past um, and kind of where I can add value. Obviously, the video is you know we we've talked about that. Uh, before there's a lot of folks uh, on the team already. I love to collaborate. I'm big on collaboration. Uh, John and um, is it Bill? And, uh, Bill, uh, yep, John, Bill, and there were two or three others. I think that do. Yeah, that Mike, uh, Demergent, Mike, who's uh, yeah. he's uh, he's a lot. He he sort of played himself down, but he's yeah. really big. Um, people in the Giants and the Jets in Iona. I mean, he he's running the Iona. Masters for sports programming. Oh wow, cool! So he knows he knows his stuff like cold. And they have a whole studio there in Iona. Do they and, really? Uh, nice. Yeah. So that's you know this new Rochelle. So that's just outside of New York, and I I can see us using that. He said we can use that facility too. So Perfect. we're doing production and stuff. We can go in and use uh, that system. So that'd be really cool. That is excellent. I've got the same access if we ever want to do something Rhode Island College. They have a full production studio there that I have access to as well. Cool. So, cool. yep. So right here on Rhode Island. So if you need, need something done here quickly, we can do that too. Um, so obviously the video stuff is, is well within my, my wheelhouse. Um, the other is I know you're putting together a team. I, don't know, if, I know John is, I think, spearheading this as your technology guy, but you're working there. You're, you're deeply involved as well on the, on the website build and the rebuild and the rebranding of that. Um, so I've done, I put together full stack teams and, I've done e-commerce sites for you know a, bi a billion dollar lifestyle brand with Alex Anani. So we did, we basically changed over their entire e-commerce structure and, and, and built that from 20 million to 200 million. <laughs> so it was it was basically the, 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 the beginning stage of their e-commerce kind of taking off on this. I mean, they were talking bangles and bracelets, so it was more jewelry, but um, we we. we totally revamped and rebuilt the whole branding site. So if you need help around that, I've, I've built that stuff too. Work with Adobe and work at Adobe Creative Suite. So I've done a lot of um, tech stuff. I'm not, tech, I'm not a tech person, but I'm good at overseeing the management of, uh, while imp implementing kind of some branding knowledge around that stuff. So if you need some help around that, I, that, I think that's a, a skill set I can leverage as well. So Kelly is the one right now who is, um, that's really interesting, Tony. Um, so Kelly is, is right now taking care of the e-commerce and she has oh, positive awesome. connections there. But um, I didn't know you had such experience in e-commerce. Yeah. Um, yep. So I, I, led a, I led an organization that was about 35, 40 people. So Alex and Ani at the time, they owned us. It's called, it was called Seven Swords Media. So I was a CEO of Seven Swords Media. So when Alex and Ani was taking off and again, going from 20 million to 200, they're a billion dollar lifestyle brand now. I was overseeing the big portion of that brand messaging. So 
we were about 85% of our revenue was coming from Alex and Ani. And then 15%, I was, my, my vision was to grow the, uh, the, the ad agency from just Alex and Ani. So the Alex and Ani owned us. We were doing a lot of the bangles, the bracelets, the video commercials, radio spots, um, out of home billboards. We were doing everything for Alex and Ani across the country. So as we were building that, my vision was, hey, I don't want to be totally sufficient um, or dependent on Alcinani. I want to grow this thing above and beyond. Let's take this thing to Madison Avenue. We'll take it to Ralph Lauren. We'll take it to other brands and say, hey, we built the lifestyle brand. We can do this for you guys. Polo, we had discussions with them about doing some stuff with them as well. So it was really a thing where I was, I was sitting back going, okay, we can grow this thing be above and beyond just, just Alcinani in retail. We can take it to universities, we took it to Holy Cross, we took it to um, Bryant, we took it to um, Brown University. So building a whole new agency that was worth about, the time we, I left it, it was about 50 million. Wow. So it went from 20 to 50, and then we were managing a media plan that was 2 million a month. So it was a, you know, 18, $20 million media buy, which I hated, but we still processed the paper on that. So media planning, the e-commerce stuff, the vid, you know, this typical video production, commercial stuff, that was all coming through uh, Seven Swords for Alex and Ani. So we were managing everything from the website, e-commerce, to, again, all the brand messaging for them. So I wanted to give you a better scope above and beyond just a resume, kind of what I was overseeing there, to see if it applies to kind of what you're trying to pull together. So, so again, website builds with my current agency, Tilt, and uh, Bravo Charlie Delta, I have two agencies right now that I run. We do anywhere from $20,000 sites to, I'm doing one right now for $250,000. So I, I kind of run, it kind of runs the gamut there. So if there's any help, anything you want to leverage with me on, on website builds, UX, UI, um, I can definitely be a consultant around that as well. So you're, you're talking about contract stuff now, engagement stuff. So I want to kind of just lay out where, you know, I want to just be pigeonholed in video. Um, if I can help you out somewhere else, man, I'm, 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 I'm your guy. Um, the other piece I'm really good at, it, it could probably add some value would be around BD. So I've worked a lot of, I'm working on two startups right now. <laughs> One is an app that was launched in 2017, 17, 18. We're on a series B funding now. So we just got, uh, we probably went through about 1.2. We're at 2.4 right now. So we get about 3 million right now that I've helped raise. So on the ad development side, the ad revenue side, um, corporate, corporate partnerships, corporate alliances, you know, I helped this app get their first five national um, clients on board. So in order to get the series A funding, they went from angel to series A. Um, they need, they had to prove, you know, the, the, the you know, the proof, basically proof the thing and say, hey, this thing is market ready. So in order to do that, we had to get five national accounts on board. I helped them get four of the five. Um, so, you know, the Verizons of the world, Google's Al you know, Alphabet is on board with them now. So um, on the on the BD side, I can add a lot there as well. You, you know, my my LinkedIn network, you can check that out as well. But um, yeah, I just want to, I just want to offer that above and beyond just video production There's some things I can add value, um, brand messaging, if you need help putting that one pager together. We talked about with Kelly. I, I, Kelly's awesome, by the way. I think she's, she, she and I kind of think of like, you know, there's certain people on the call you kind of vibe with like, Hey, yeah. I, that girl's making sense. <laughs> really amazing. Um, she really is. Yeah. She's, yeah. She, I, I like her, her thought process. Every time she says something, I'm like, yeah, I'm exact, thinking the same exact thing. And I mentioned the part about the one page or the deck and she said, Yes, that's exactly what I think we need to have as well. So, and you're on the same page. It seems like as well. Yeah, you're, you're, kind of a market, you're a marketing guy. Um, so, I just wanted to add some some color, flavor of things I think I can offer above and beyond um, just straight video production. I mean, right now, my the core competency of my agency is when I walk into a new client, it, it is around video production. But I say to them, hey you know, how can I help in other ways? And invariably it's, it's marketing, branding, messaging first. And then I say everything else I do above and beyond that is just platform, right? So I talk about what are your main points you want to, you want to get across? So there's a lot of exercise that I do in uh, with new clients. That's pretty unique. 
and kind of extracting that brand voice. And then anything else is just, okay, what do you want to play that? What was it? Video platform? Is it social media combination thereof? So I think I have a really good technique around extracting that brand voice and then synthesizing that and then putting it back out on platform. So it's my, that's kind of what I love to do. Um, so I, I want to offer all of that. So you're not just thinking about me behind the camera. <laughs> that was the last thing I was thinking about. <laughs> I know you have all this other stuff and, and uh, you know, the biz dev is, to me, the, the, someone said about eight years ago, and I started really formalizing what we're going to do. They said, you know, you're, you're a marketing company. You're, you're, you know, you're only producing a little bit of content of your own. Everything yeah. else is putting everyone else's stuff together. You're aggregating. You're, bring, you're bringing these parties together that need each other. And by making the connections and providing the resources, you're going to help a kid going from 10 years old saying, hey, what's that thing with the swords to being yeah. an Olympic uh, fencer? And, right. uh, you know, that's, I, I said I was going to retire when I, when some kid learns about a sport on UB Sports and goes to the Olympics. I'm done. There you go. And, and tells his friend about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's on top of it. But, yeah. you know, the, 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 the impact you can have on a life by doing that, by empowering them. Awesome. Is, I think it's awesome. You know, it's like the best thing. So, yeah, um, okay. So, so and, and BD stuff, I'll just add lastly, is that the BD stuff is, um, you know, my stage of my life I, I i love putting deals together man so it's that's uh that's kind of my my uh my passion too i love my work on startups and i'm talking to you know angels uh angel investors or you know sitting down with a vc or sitting down with a, a new corporate client the bd stuff to me is um i won't say it's easy for me but it's my natural environment yeah. um i love putting deals together and connecting folks and and making things happen man so it's uh that's that's um that's that that's easy stuff for me that's how i find it too i find out that that it, especially coming to a consultant situation where it's not your company and exactly. someone says this is what i do and all of a sudden the bell starts <laughs> going off ding, ding, ding. you gotta do this, yeah. this 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 and it's a lot yeah. easier when it's somebody else's company that's for sure no doubt no there's doubt. Uh, a woman down in uh, north carolina she has she has like 50 liquor brands Mm -hmm. under her belt and they distill and they make whatever they want to make yep. and uh I, I talked to her on the phone and she was saying well this is my problem i'm like okay here's what you do funk 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 and yep. but the resistance i was getting was driving me crazy everything was like well i don't know if that's gonna work i'm like well, yeah I'm see yeah come on <laughs> come on <laughs> yeah. I, I, either you believe in me or you don't and exactly uh, stuff yeah. we can't what, what can we do then you know what I mean? Take, flip the page. What, what, do, you, what do you think we can do? Yeah, <laughs> Not exactly. what we can. You know? now, instead of uh, seeing something in black and white, you're looking at black, white and black. Okay, exactly. So, yeah, hey, okay, I see. Or a color. Yeah, yeah. yeah, give me the gray. Give me the gray. So, so, what, so what, do you, what do you think when you're assembling this team? What do you, it's kind of a, there's a lot of folks there. There's, um, you know, I, I've got a lot of other stuff going on. Obviously, I've got two agencies that I run. One's kind of centered on, again, nonprofits. The Bravo Charlie Delta, just give you a snapshot of my, my Tony Lopes world for a minute. So I got Bravo Charlie, Charlie Delta, which is um, video production in the higher ed nonprofit space. That's kind of, that's taken off. So I'm doing a lot with Auburn University right now, Brown, Ivy Leagues, HBCUs, the like. Diversity consulting I do with um, Tilt Communications. That's huge right now in the higher ed space because they're all thinking about, hey, how do I, as we're either doing a hybrid of online classes or we're bringing folks back on campus, how is this whole, what's happening in the streets right now with Black Lives Matter? What's your corporate campus, I'm sorry, your campus culture like right now? So how are you bringing folks back onto a, a really inclusive environment on campus? I'm doing a, a lot of consulting around that. So that's kind of taken up on the tilt side. So as I'm doing that, as I'm, I'm making, I kind of use it as the entree discussion point about, okay, what's your overall messaging for the university? Well, we're trying to get out there to fund development and do things on the capital campaign side and they're using stuff from an in-house video team to ask donors to write a check for a million dollars. I'm like, you may not want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you maybe want to have something that looks semi-professional that um, not too slick, but slick enough where it's pretty professional but you're asking folks to write you know checks for a million bucks for that new wing you may want to have a professional team do that so that's i'm kind of using the the diversity inclusion conversation to get entree to a um, marketing communication conversation 
So I've got a lot going on in the university space, same thing on the nonprofit. And then I've got a whole, I'm working with Rob, as you know, Rob's got a whole production thing going on. We're working with ESPN and we're working with some, some big people in the, in the Hollywood space around Rob. I know you and Rob had initially connected. I don't know where that went, but I know the intro was made. You know, if you guys, you know, kept the conversation going or if he was waiting to see if you were a little more, a little more baked before you got the conversation flowing again. But, you know, I'm working closely with Rob and a bunch of stuff. So, you know, you mentioned the training thing on the site. I can easily bring him, you know, back to the table for a conversation that's a little more meaty around how we can leverage. He's doing a lot of stuff in the training video side. He's doing some massive stuff. I mean, massive, like we're, like global. He's doing some global stuff. Um, and where, 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 did, where are his companies? Does he have companies or? Uh, he, has, he, has, or? He, has, he has Rob Mack NBA, and he just signed a deal with Players IQ. So they're doing the whole training thing, which, you know, I don't know if you know what they do, but they're doing the whole 3D, you know, avatar kind of thing. I don't mean to know AI kind of stuff, but he's taking his training stuff through them to do stuff that's video streaming. Um, Actually, we didn't get introduced that way. We got introduced oh. from your brother. Oh, you did? Oh, ah, okay. Right. And Daniel right. and uh, gotcha. like that whole thing. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I, okay. I, I wasn't aware. That's great. Yeah. So Rob and I work. We went. I introduced Lenny to Rob. That's good. So that, that's connections are made. That's that's more important. That's great, man. So yeah. So Rob and I working together on a whole bunch of stuff. Um, some of it includes Lenny. Most of it not. But you know, here or there, he's 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 in the mix. Yeah. So maybe just a, there's a play there later on or early on. I don't, I don't, I'm not knowing where you're at on that, but uh, I can certainly bring him back to the table. But um, yeah, I'd love to talk to him and find out what, yeah. you know, what his thoughts are. Uh, but yeah. the, you know, immediately I'm thinking, okay, so you got these, um, you got a situation where they're doing training stuff and training videos and all kind of stuff. And right. they're offering that in a subscription basis, like a monthly basis. Correct. And that's what we're part of. That's 20% of our revenue. So the sooner um, we set up those uh, communities and him as one of the subscriptions we can offer, mm -hmm. and being that he has more than one, it's even better. So yep. uh, we can go to the different communities that he sells into yep. and immediately put up his banners and stuff. And uh, you know, we would do that for free because number one, we're young. We don't have a bigger population. Yep. Number two, we will take, you know, 20% of the, the revenue from the subscriptions that we bring in from our population. Got it. Obviously, his population is great. And he's building on his own. But when yep. we bring in an additional person to him, that's someone he didn't have before. Yep. And that's when it's worth money for, uh, for him to do. And that's why he would give us a percentage of that revenue. And you'll be able to, you'll be able to track through KPI, whatever, that that person – came from that new person new client came from you guys not something he generated I well guess. well exactly because it'll it'll it comes through us like he clicks a button and there's this banner for his stuff on uh one of the pages that one of our members sees they yep. click on that yep. that referral immediately gets locked into that uh that person so Perfect. when yep. it ends up in rob's lap he goes oh, wow great and he, and he signs them up and everything's yep. done right through UB Sports. The payment's done right through UB Sports. He has no cost there, and he ends up with 80% uh, of the revenue. Perfect. That's so, awesome. That's, I, I, that's great. Yeah, I that's would love great. to do that for him. Yeah, now, man. Talk about like, your, your, what e-commerce system are you using when you produce an e-commerce site? So we started, we did some WooCommerce. There was a WooCommerce kind of plug-in. That was because uh, we had, uh, it was a... Uh, yeah, it was WooCommerce plugins. Then we had to do something very highly customized. We actually, it was, it was no product off the shelf. It was actually something that we had to do that was uh, totally customized. Um, so it was ginormous. And, um, you know, we ended up having to go through, a, a, through Adobe. So we went through Adobe on that. And then they plugged this into something highly customized as well. Sapient, Sapient Nitro, I don't even know those folks. They were a division of Adobe. So they helped us with the development of a, a kind of a, a customized e-commerce platform, totally customized for them. Because they had three different, um, three different uh, accrual accounting platforms that was all fucked up. I mean, it was so, they were such a mess. 
So they had one was called Sage. I don't know if you know Sage, it was yeah. the county platform there. So they were using that and then they had to meld that into another, and this is five years ago. So I'm, my mind's kind of, it was Sage and then another platform that was also used for a county in another area, but it was different than Sage. And they had to roll those two together and then bring that into, into this customized thing we did with the Sapient. And it was, um, it was, a, it was a total mess. Wow. Um, only because they had three different kinds of accounting platforms originally, but, um, and some of, a lot of it was working off Excel spreadsheets. It was, it was crazy how they had kind of convert things from Excel over to other P and L's. And it was, it was, it was a mess, but, um, it, my team, luckily we were 25 kind of dedicated out of the 40, 25 dedicated to that, to that build. And it took us about 18 months to get it converted over. So for a $20 million entity, that's not too bad. So we fully converted over the, um, the CTO is actually still a good friend of mine. He's at a company called Carousel Industries now, but he's, um, he's a CTO. He's a real good guy. If there's ever, you know, if you need another CTO, I know John is awesome, but if you ever want to play on this other guy, he's pretty bright, pretty brilliant. He works well in the, in the startup space. Um, so if there's ever, you know, that latitude where John could collaborate with somebody and jump in, this, I would highly recommend this guy. I get, I'll flip you his name. And what's his name, John? No, his name, actually, you know what? His name, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hey, baby. Laura. What was, was Al um CEO's name? He's just an um, intelligent guy, CIO. Yes, Joe Lee's not Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, Joe, Joe Lee's on. <laughs> Forget his name, Joe Lezon, L-E-Z-O-N. He's a friend. Of, he's on my LinkedIn too. He's at Carousel Industries. He's a CIO, um, but really good tech background and good at these really good customized builds. And he he's he and I work really closely on this. So he he was their CIO, Alex Nani, but then he helped out on the media side because again, our our entity was owned by Alex Nani. So there was that strange, they owned us, but we were a separate company. We were doing about 18 million as a separate entity that I oversaw. And we built up from 18 to 32 million in less than three years. We were in Inc. Magazine as one of the fastest growing ad agencies in the country. Wow, cool. Yeah, it was very cool. It was cool. So yeah, so Joe and I kind of worked together closely because of the Alex and Ani relationship with, um, with our media company. It was really cool. Yeah, so yeah, so we, it was... It was, you know, I'm more overseeing that kind of bill. I wasn't, you know, you know, sleeves rolled up inside the tech stuff, but I was overseeing the management of and had to report back to the board about what the progress was on that build. So, okay. yeah, so it was good, man. So, yeah, it's, there's a lot of pieces to it. I'm sure you're finding that out, but I think this is where, this is the make or break stuff, right? You're, you're looking for money. Um, and then the folks who are giving you the money, are really concerned with burn rate, right? And you're that this can, I've seen this kill more startups than than I care to mention. I was involved in two or three where you know they brought the team out from India originally. And actually Alex and I made a mistake originally. They were with Alex, they were with India, a team with India, um, where Sapient had contracted out to India and they were batching all the changes and sending them to the folks at the team in India overnight. And you know them, they're, they're, you know how the India folks work. They're very black, and you talk about black and white. Here's, I, you know, I want this page layout to be like X, okay? There's no creative thought process at all. They give you exactly what you send over. And invariably, that's not exactly what we were looking for or what we needed down the line. It may have been the exact order we sent through, but it wasn't reflective of what we, so a little bit of thinking and some creative approach could have saved them a lot of money. So the burn rate was incredibly bad. So we got ourselves in a, in, a, in a really bad pickle until we came in with Adobe and Sapient Nitro and those folks came in and really cleaned it up. And so we moved away from the India team to a, to a domestic team. And, but my point being is that the, the burn rate and the stuff is really where you could really kill yourself um, if you get some, some money in the door. So I know you're working on all that, but I'm, and I'm sure you, I'm preaching to the choir, but I'm just letting, I've experienced those things too, kind of working through the, 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 the challenge of 
hey, here you get, you're assembling a team, right? And making sure you keep an eye on the money and the team and making sure that the burn rates where it should be and things are moving progressively and not, you know, wasting money. And so I've, I've done, I've been knee deep in all those things. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm feeling your pain, but I also kind of, it's kind of a cool place to sit. It's a fun place to sit right now. You know, things are starting <laughs> to roll and we uh, look like we're having the first quarter million come in within days. That's awesome. So, um, that'll, that'll really get the wheels rolling. Um, I'm going to say you're the first, I've got I've a couple of stops who are more just um, cool new ideas. You're the first person I've sat with who had an idea you've been working on for 15, you said 15 years. Yeah. You're the first, I, I, I'm going to be totally honest with you. That's the first time I've sat with somebody that's had that much, you know, experience in, in kind of do, in dipping in this thing for that period of time. So your, your knowledge around this thing has got to be pretty, pretty deep, I would imagine. Yeah. And it's gone through so many, so much change over the past 15 years because the world's changed and technology in particular. I mean, we, we built right. three betas and we're, what you see now at UB Sports is the third beta. So, beta. but the problem with it is built on Ruby on Rails, which is not an efficient program. No. Um, and uh, it was great for learning what we needed to do. And yep. to build the back office, it was pretty solid, but it crashes every Friday. Right. Because it's just so inefficient in use, use of, the, te- of uh, the resources. I had, I had a question on that too, actually, when you were bringing it up during the call. So what we used to do, I've got a, I've got a team here, a um, team about, it's called career devs, where we take these young hotshot kids, we kind of get them into tech, uh, tech companies. So they have no prior experience in coding. They have an interest in coding. We've got a coding expert, full stack guy who, who kind of trains them over 18 months. Then we get them $80,000 a year jobs out in the field. And these, you know, a couple of people in there are like these stars. So I actually had them and a couple of stops that came to me and say, listen, we're looking to change, get a team developed and get a team together to, to kind of work on the next beta. Okay, at how are you bidding out on this on this job? And you'll invariably give them the specs on what you know your Ruby on Rails, whatever your specs is, the back end coding on on your current beta. Okay, show me your approach on that. So you're not giving them you know your site, you're giving them kind of the specs to your site. How would you build the next beta for this and kind of see how what their thinking is, as opposed to just saying, hey, I'm going to go with these guys and you give them the contract and then you see the work that they do. Are you yeah. just, just kind of curious how you're assembling the team is going to work on your, your you know, hopefully your final beta, <laughs> your final so iteration. Is the actual first production as opposed to a beta. In, in yes. general. There you go. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So that's my goal now is to, we, we've done all that. We did all the testing and stuff. We know how it's supposed to work. We know the workflow. We know, uh, we don't know. I'm not comfortable yet. I'm not comfortable with the UI UX. And uh, honestly, that's the part that, you know, I was really uh, hoping to pull you in on yeah. uh, kind of stuff. Cause you know, you're, you're the man when it comes to that kind of stuff. And I and can absolutely help there. So absolutely. also the graphics and, and even the logo. I mean, I'm not, yep. I sort of like our circular one. I don't know if you've seen that, but um, the, just the name UB sports. I mean, that, that's just a font really. Yep. So, you know, what I can do on that front that, Keeps it classy and sort of generic, but sporty. You know, Got I don't it. have it, you know, looking like it belongs to cheerleaders or quarterbacks or, you know, I want it to be solid, yeah. uh, institutional, but still with you personally. So I love that. You, you're you're going to stick with UB Sports as the name, now, which I like. I, well, I, I do because it also falls into what one of our mottos is, which is you belong. You belong. I love it. Or UB. And, uh, yep. I love it. So um, okay, I can play with some iterations on that too, just to show you, just to kind of I'd love toss to some creative around. I'd love to see it. Yeah, and sure. uh, so that, and also uh, my my goal with you is also to well, I just learned a whole lot more about what you do, so we can pull you in all over the place. How much time do you have, though? I mean, really, when it comes down to it, how much do you charge per hour, and how much? I that great. I was going to kind of dive right into that actually. So I'm so the consulting on the, um, the the university space when I do diversity consulting, I just finished an engagement, three year engagement with Johnson and Wales, helping them find professors of color to to for faculty hires. Uh-huh. Um, so that's a hundred and fifty dollar an hour engagement. So that's you know I was I was getting you know eight grand eight grand a month doing that. Um, 
obviously in the startup environment, much different environment. So when I work in an actual client gig on the video side, the creative side, I'm 175. Hey, I'm, I hate doing project costs, but I, you know, as a CEO of an agency, I kind of back down all these numbers. You know how it works. Okay, we'll do a two day a two day shoot. That's gonna cost. I gotta bring a lighting guy. You know, I gotta do this guy. I gotta do sound, a, a videographer, and my DP. And that's gonna cost me. You know, my cost is X. So I don't really factor in my cost a lot because I'm I'm overseeing the company. So, right. but my cost to a client is roughly one hundred seventy five dollars an hour. Okay. So to me, if I would to make this worthwhile for me, honestly, I mean, this is you and I talking. So what I would love to see is if I could work 20 hours, I could fit in 20 hours a month on this. If that's enough work for you, if that's enough time for you, I could do more right. and then come down on the per hour. But I, I, to make it worth, even just worthwhile to say, okay, I'm not doing my own client stuff. I'm going to divert some of that time to, to, to devote to this. Um, I feel it was three grand a month. That would, that's for, for now in your startup phase, that's, that's enough for me right now. Okay. Um, yeah, that that's, out, that's, that's, that's 20 hours a month. Is that, I don't know if that's more of a, do you not more of a, an hour commitment or you need less of an hour commitment? What are others doing? Forget about the price for a minute. Is, is the hour commitment what you're in need of? I think so. Um, okay. I, yeah, somewhere between, I mean, certainly I, I could just let you lose because there, there are so many different things that you can be doing. Right. And, uh, you know, yeah, I've got no problem. I'll add, I'll get no problem. Some of that hourly time is skin in the game where I'm doing the BD stuff. Okay. You get, you know, I kill what you eat, kind of eat what you kill. So I, if you want to do some of the BD and I can say, Hey, there's no conversation on that piece. I just, you know, the piece of whatever comes in, I can uh, you no know, commission around that. But then on the creative ideation side, the UX stuff, I, you know, I, I would need to get, you know, a, a dollar on that. But I have no problem putting some skin in the game on the uh, on the BD stuff. Okay, so on the uh, fundraise, ten uh, percent. Yep. So you know, you bring, whatever you bring in, you're getting ten percent of. Awesome. So um, when your time spent doing that, knock it out of the park on that side, man. That's you know, that's cool. that's uh, if you got people. Typical, who, typical find. Yeah. I love that. You keep, you keep it simple. Typical finders fee. Yeah, ten percent. I love it simple yeah and you know this is something you can really sell this is something that everybody understands sports everybody has a pain someplace in there yeah. and it could be you know I, I it sucked when i was a kid learning how to fence like for me um yeah. it could be I, it sucked because i didn't know anything about uh baseball how to coach baseball but my kids yeah. started playing baseball yep so as an adult as a parent i needed that help gotcha. and, and uh, then coaches in in leagues they have so many little pain points that they've gotten used to right. that once you start shaking it out and they say, well, it sucks that I have to, that I don't really have a, uh, a coordinated way to teach the kid how to pitch. Right. Or how to hit a ball off of a T-ball uh, stand. Yeah. Right. And uh, all that stuff is, you know, I'd love to have someplace where I can say, go to this URL for that. Yeah. And uh, so if that's their pain point, then we build a knowledge base around that so they can handle that. And that's really simple. That's just, loading content onto a, their portal. Exactly. You build them a portal and they're off and running. And uh, we can handle the signups and the, and the logins and all that kind of stuff. And yep. every, the best part about it is that, to me, is that it's not just whatever sport they're teaching, like if it's baseball, but yep. you know, the kids are also going to go cycling and they're going to do, they're going to, during the winter, they're going to go skiing and that kind of stuff. Exactly. You have the information around that as well right. adds a whole different level of, uh, interactivity with UB sports. I love it. I love it. And, uh, and the whole medical component too. So if you, if a, a, I could see this. So university orthopedics is major in this area, right? So I, I, I could not imagine that university orthopedics would not want to be plastered all over this site in every oh. sports vertical you have. Hey, you sprain an ankle, you know, mountain biking, uh, whatever, whatever it is, right? They're going to want to be front and center position within that, within that vertical. Yeah, so uh, we might want to approach them as uh, either a provider of content right. or actually as a, an investor in their portal here. Um, yeah. And Love we it. can also set up um, banners for them and do an ad uh, placement for them. Exactly. 
So I love the, grad- I love the gradation. You're, you're thinking the opposite. I think most people will be thinking like, okay, just get them out as an advertiser. You're, you're thinking, I love your thinking is that content partner. And then yeah, bottom of the rung is just straightforward ad, ad placement, ad visibility. It just like, why, why stop there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So I, um, you know, I, I love that idea too. I love when you can, you know, there are so many ways it's scary, but also great that mm-hmm. this is such an open platform that we yeah. can go there. Yeah. You know, there's so many companies that would just say, I, that's not our, our thing, but the way I built this and the way it's, te- it's built on a template, basically the CSS where yeah. it just multiplies out. I can say, okay, I have this one platform that I'm using for football. It's the same thing I'm using for fencing and field yeah. hockey and baseball yeah. and volleyball. And it literally is the, in- the environment. It looks the same. Well, different graphics, but the workflow is the same, whatever sport you pick. Yeah. And uh, as long as, you know, it's a, it's a portal and it's a group and it's put together like that. I think, yeah, that's why I think this, this next iteration, this next template, the next beta, well, the next, this final, wherever you're going to launch is going to be so critical that I think people really, because what you're looking at now, this beta, I don't think that, that the, the value prop is easily positioned or visible to them right now. Nope. You know, so I think your next, the next thing you put in front of folks, if you are, you are the, let's just sake of the conversation, not to grossly simplify, is we're the kayak of sports. <laughs> we're this beautiful aggregator where wherever your sport you're interested in, here's where you go for information. And there's community there, there's information there, there's training, whatever, just talk, chat with each other, learn from each other, you're injured, this is where you go. It, it could be so friggin' beautiful, but I think. Th- the, the visual around that is going to be what's really drive. Like Dr. X, this is why you want to be part of this. Oh, I need to be part of that. Yeah. And that's really going to differentiate it you know, from, from others that are out there right now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The graphics and the measure, uh, the uh, messaging are so important there. No doubt. No doubt. So that's because that's what I'm thinking. So I'm thinking if I, I was doing this for three grand um, a month minimally, and then, you know, 10, 10% on whatever I bring in, um, I've got, that's very, very comfortable for me. I can add a lot of help on the conversion to your final platform we go into. I can add a lot on the UX, UI side. Um, there's a whole team I could think of right now that could help out uh, with, I always say John, it's John, right? It is yeah. John. Yeah. Okay. I just, yeah, there's a lot I can, I can definitely add around that. And branding, messaging, logo design, and then content stuff that's, yeah, all well within my wheelhouse, and I, I love to do it. And anything with a sports swing to it is um, very attractive to me. And I yeah. love startups. I love startups, man. So, and I like you. <laughs> yeah. <That helps. laughs> but, you know, you can't work with people you don't like and you don't respect. Exactly. And yeah. uh, that's like the, the, the key to me is to have a bunch of people who I really, really respect, who I'm, you know, honored to be in, in the same room with them, and then have them, you know, be friends as well as uh you know great workmates it's a great so, group it really is an impressive group man honestly i so, can't i can't believe how good it is it really is incredible i was uh definitely impressed by that for sure yeah. what's carl's what, what is his position what does he do carl right now is just an advisor okay. um he and i'm using him as such but he's got so many contacts and what, is, what, is his, what does he do now, like his real life? Like what is he doing he right now? He started a company oh, called Eversport, and that's a video uh, site. And he also has been consulting for other sports organizations. He basically was one of the two people behind UEFA. Um, ah, okay. And gotcha. a lot of stuff with football over in Europe. So gotcha. um, and he's European, he's German. So yep. he has that background. And, you know, Europe's a lot smaller place than the United States. Right. Get down to it. Everybody knows everybody. And he does. He knows everybody. So, so uh, awesome. I love it. Amazing. Um, and he, I think I'm going to make him be the head of Europe when we, uh, when we do that. Because I don't, can't imagine anyone who's got better connections who can turn. I'm going to see how well it can turn a connection into actual business. It's awesome. But we'll see. Um, so, yeah, he, he can be valuable. Right now, I'm using him as helping me make sure my operations are going smooth that i'm doing the right thing on a day-to-day basis cool. and uh cool. make sure that we're putting things together but i think so far we've hit the numbers i mean i think we're, we're really doing what we got to do right out of the box okay. and we're getting other pressure and focus from the hype sports people because not only is that media but it's also esports and esports yep. when i started 
developing this, you're getting the full nine yards on me. Um, so right. when we first started, when I sort of started planning this thing, and I sat down with my 12 people in my, in my dining room, and mm -hmm. we were going through what to do, what, what everybody needed, it turned out that everybody needed the same components. Blogs, right. news, rules, uh, places to play, the teams to play with, mentors, people to play with, mm -hmm. uh, videos for skills and drills and competition. And on my off hours, I want to watch just plain fun video in my yeah. sport. So yeah. it could be like if I'm a baseball player, I want to watch um, Bull Durham. If I'm a right. golfer, I want to watch uh, Tin, Tin Cup. <laughs> yep. So there's so many different uh, – Every sport pretty much has video and, and movies and stuff around it. Exactly. So we're going to bring that in on top, the entertainment side as well as all the stuff that is I love operational. It. I love it. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have a regular sports movie uh, component to this thing. That is yeah. very cool. Yeah, I like that. So I, you know, and on the BD side, on the, on the content side, so I've, I've known, I knew the person who was head of global content, strategic content, for Netflix, he left there to go to Sony, but he's a good friend of mine. I know this top, the second guy over at Viacom in New York City is a good friend of mine. So I, I've got some good connects in the content space. So Netflix, Sony, Viacom, and then Rob is, better, he won't say this to you, I'll mention it between you and I, but he's good friends with Bob Iger, uh -huh. Disney's Iger. And I mean, I mean, good friends. I mean, he works out, he trains his two kids. Wow. He trains his son. So Max Iger, I, I personally know, and I don't know the second son, but um, Max and I are friends. And then he, Robin, Robin, Bob Iger are pretty tight. And he'll, okay. please don't mention that, but he'll mention that to him, but he'll bring it up to you if, if, if the conversation goes that far. But so you might want to know this as well. Are my long term, my, my inner workings, say that in five years we should be bought out by abc there you go and you know disney because it's oh. all this is like hot dogs and apple pie this is about as clean and as good as wholesome as american as you can get no doubt about it i want i want to see abc take back the olympics i want to i want to see them yeah. in, in, i love oh my god we, now you're now now we're talking our, we're showing our age now man that why yeah. world of sports on that why world of sports was like one of my favorite things to watch it's like my idol yeah, yeah and I actually uh, talked to him a little bit once, and he was like, I love what you're doing because you're doing what I did 40 years ago. Get out. Yeah. So uh, That's cool. Yeah. But it is. It's, this is exactly where we want to go, you know. And this, I think if he were around now, he would do that. He would want to build this company. 100%. You know? So, and lastly, on the esports side, I mentioned, I mentioned at the top as well. So, I've got a good friend of mine, actually in Boston, who's actually, he did a lot of, um, BD for Viacom and National Amusements, and which is not a subsidiary of Viacom, if I'm not mistaken. But he's doing a lot with Kraft right now on esports. You know, Kraft has his own his own league. I forget the name of the league, the esports league with uh, owned by the Patriots. Are you familiar with them? No, I'm not. That's what so, helps have someone up around your area. You know all this. So, shit. Yeah. So Bob Kraft started an esports league that's blowing up right now I'll, I'll get the i don't have the name in front of me but I'll, I'll flip it to you in two seconds um as soon as we hang up this call so he's building that thing out like crazy he has these huge mega events esports related blah, blah, blah. so he, i'm sure if you're talking about taking this thing to a portal a platform or mobile whatever whatever you're going doing on the esports i'm not even clear what your vision is around the esports be honest with you i don't know it's a component of what you're doing but i'll learn it when i get the one pager uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's um, the same thing. It's like sports and esports have a lot in common because it's competitive, number one. It is. Number yep. two, there's a governing body, which is usually the game manufacturer or the league right. in the case. And, uh, but, you know, even if it's a league, it's still being run by the rules of the game, of the video manufacturer, right? Uh, so, uh, so, yes, it is. So, that's also really important. But, um, there's a community all around each one of these uh, esports. So um, that's a great, that would be a really great intro and, and great people to talk to. So did I lose you? you still yes, there? I can definitely, you know, let's, let's get things. Yeah, I'm still here. You still there? Yeah. 
I'm here, I'm here. Oh, okay, yeah, we just froze up a little bit. Yeah, so that's, I can put that together pretty quickly. Soon I have, you know, let's get this engagement thing tightened up. And I'd be glad, I'd love to make intros and uh, set you up for conversations, whatever you, whatever you like to do. We could do Zooms all day with, with some contacts. Um, he's right in Mass, too. He's right in Boston. And I, I connect with him and, and set up a, a kind of an intro call when, when you think the timing is right on that. Um, well, I'd want to pick his brain right now and find out what they need. Because if we're building a state-of-the-art video system, it's mm -hmm. got to be uh, at least as good as what they have. Okay. And it might, if we're, do, if we're building it from scratch with components that are state-of-the-art right now, it might be better than what they have. Perfect. Well, all right. Let's, let's, so let's solidify our engagement then quickly so I can make that intro. And then what I like to do is um, he, there's also an apparel line that, that may work well for your commerce side too, is that... They're developing the first apparel line um, that will accompany. So when all these teams come together, and it's Team X, and they they wear the gloves and the T-shirts with the logo on it, and it's now making it into Hollywood movies. So the movie, so the movie has a logo. The logo is now on the T-shirt. The T-shirt is now being sold as kind of like you could be part of Team Greg Bur Team Burton. And the gloves go with that. And now you're part of, the, has a logo on the back of the glove. So this whole apparel thing is now becoming, I guess, hot and heavy on the e-commerce, e I'm sorry, e the e-sports side. But um, I can do an intro there as well if there's an e-commerce partnership that could be part of that too. Yeah. So. Well, I think the, the, the press right now is e-sports. E right. As we're in this incubator yep. and it's two months. We've got, to, we've got to knock the cover off the ball in two months. So uh, we've got to have, awesome. Great. at very least, I'm happy to make that tight and you know, uh, um, moving. You know, so that'd be right. that'd be cool. Awesome, my my pleasure. I love to do that. So okay. those are the kind of things I can I can set up. Um, so yeah, I, so do should, do I get paperwork to you? You want to get paperwork to me? You want to think about it, or just I'll just put something in front of you? You can think about it and sign or red line or what? How do you want to proceed? So I'll send you uh, the doc that we're using for everybody. Awesome. Now, the question I have Perfect. for you is, um, do you, how many shares, like how, what percentage of that 3K, if any, do you want in actual shares? You know, how much do you believe in us in the long term? I, a lot. So let me, yeah, let me think about that. I would like to have some of that put in shares. Sure. Let me, let me think about that. But I'd love to, yeah, I'd like to definitely think about long term for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, okay. Let, to give you some context, I think that, uh, $3 share right now will be worth at least $150 in five years. And if we get bought out, if we do what we think we're going to do, um, that'll be the, uh, that's, that's almost a fail. If we do what, what I think we're going to do, um, yeah. is $3 to $150 okay. is basically, um, growing the company to about 4 million people. Now in five years, Instagram went from, uh, about a, a million people to 2.5 billion. Right, exactly, pretty quick. What do you have in the beta right now? Uh, we have about 5,000 actual uh, subscribers and um, we have about 10,000 visits. So, okay. um, and we're not even, we can't market right now. I don't, right. I don't want any first adopter looking at this thing. No, I hear so, you. I think yep. it's actually been going, going down recently because I've been pushing everybody away. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I really don't. I'm I'm scared of someone who's got a million followers going to them and saying UV Sports sucks. Yeah, I hear. You. Um, so I built I built an app. Well, I was co-partnered with a. Uh, we had a free coffee gifting, the first ever universal coffee gifting app called NAC. It was N A C K. Uh -huh. uh, if you look at getnac.com, that's that was me and uh, Paul Paul Hahn, who was the founder. So we built a uh, an app. Twenty thousand, uh, twenty thousand initial users, and we had about ten thousand to fifteen thousand unique users to the site, and then we took it off app and just made it plain. You, you didn't have to draw, download the app to to get the uh, get the application. You could do a rough URL. So you and I meet first time, and hey, Greg, it was nice meeting you. I would send you a coffee. And it would be like, you know, my picture on it. It was nice to meet you today to, you know, sit down and chat. 
and you can actually we get two coffees, one for you and then one for you to share with someone else. So it's kind of like a, um, you know, uh, yeah, grassroots, uh, grassroots, exactly. Kindness, sharing, gifting. But the thing about it, it was the first universal um, app to do that. So right now, if you want to, I want to gift it, I can go to Starbucks and gift you a coffee all day long. But what if you don't like Starbucks? Yeah. What if you're a Dunkin' Donuts guy? Yeah, this would give you the ability to use it at the mom and pop shop, which was huge for the, the mom and pop world because they don't have that kind of visibility usually. Right. So it put them put them on an equal playing field with a Starbucks or Dunkin Donuts and they loved it. Um, Dunkin offered us a lot of money to buy it as a proprietary app and we in the owner, the actual owner, the majority owner turned it down, turned on a lot of money. So, you know, I say that because I, I, I respect what you're doing you could probably sell this thing you know short term for some bucks and you know walk off in the sunset but you got a you got a bigger vision and you're going to make this thing you're going to make a lot of money <laughs> as opposed to a little bit of money now five years and my next three generations can retire so you know that's that's i, I look at it as something that's going to be great for the population though. i, I see, <laughs> you know i i see it as much bigger than me this is this is something that it's a mission and it's, it's something that the world needs and uh, I, like, I like that it came to me, and I like that we're really going to be able to help a lot of people. Last thing before I let you go. So as I'm doing some research in UX UI, your, as yours, and I'm sure you've done this, your biggest competitor out there in existence right now, even though you think you're very different, your biggest competitor right now is who? Is it Huddle? Is it, what's the biggest competitor in your mind right now on, what, on these portals? So I can look at it. Definitely not huddle. Huddle is all about football and, and uh, they're gone into right. basketball and other sports, but they're yeah. about um, video and recruiting and, and you know, the, 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 the uh, blocks and tackles of the, that side of things. But yep. I think active is, is probably going to look active. at. And um, yeah, I mean, maybe Yahoo Sports. Ah, uh, yep. Okay. And uh, that's like it, you know, because we're not. And even that doesn't qualify. ESPN doesn't qualify because none of those is really helping you learn how to uh, pick the ball. No, very true. And, and I think that we having, they're all constituents of what UB Sports is doing. We're going to bring in the fans, of course. We're going to bring in everybody around it. But the important part, really, the core of it's always going to be the athlete and teaching them how to mm -hmm. play better and keeping them involved and, and excited and in shape. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. I don't. I don't Love think any sport, any any company is doing that right now. Right. Right. Um, so you know, I think we really have an opportunity to go after something that, in in a, in a very obvious, intuitive way, that no one else is doing. Awesome. Awesome. I will definitely check those two out, man, and um, kind of see what they got going on look wise, and then I'll uh, I got my logo guy kind of play around with the logo, get some some inspiration there, and see what you think. Now, you, have you seen our circular one? No, uh, I love to see it. Is it on the beta now? It's on our documentation. I'll send it to you. It's not on the oh. beta at all because oh, okay. it actually was designed after we finished uh, putting together the beta. Gotcha. I love to see it. Love to see it. It's sort of like a soccer jersey kind of thing. It's a circle and it says UB Sports and UB is okay. in the middle. So. Awesome. Yeah. That's, I love to see it. Send it over. I'd love to check yeah, it well. out. All right. All right, man. This, this was good. This was great. Is that you? Kind of have a, I want to leave you with a bigger flavor as to what I think I could add. I mean, again, on the BD side, which I think is really a need you have now, I can definitely help you out with some intros. And I love the 10%, straightforward, simple. So happy to help out there. And as, as things kind of progress on the content side, um, you know, that's, I can, I love to do this. I love to work with, with Bill anyway um, and others, but primarily Bill's a pretty cool guy, it seems like. Um, and I love John, the whole thing. John, John is really a cool guy. He's like so low key. You know, very low key. <laughs> I like that. Very low key. I like that. Yeah. I like that. And then, you know, and then Kelly, Kelly is going to be phenomenal to, to kind of just talk with and, and kind of chat with. So I, I love it. She's a lead dog. I love that. She's like, check. Yep. And, uh, you know, she, I, she's going to say, can I think I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. Well, I'm <laughs> like seven months pregnant. She's going to have a, a kid. And, I, 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 get so I, I know how far, I don't want to ask, how far, she's seven months along? No, I take it back. She's five months. It's October. She's having a kid. So, uh, ah, gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. So uh, that's going to be exciting. And, you know, she said, listen, I'm, I don't care. I'm, I'm going right back to work. 
<laughs> like, wow. Shit, you guys, calm down. Say that right now. <laughs> exactly. Up, you know? that. So, we'll uh, see about that. Yeah, exactly. So, but she wants to be part time until she gets done with that, and then she'll go okay. like seriously full time. Uh, okay. So that's you know she's like fantastic for that. I, I love you know her attitude and the way she's and she's got connections. I mean, she's got she knows so many people in all the big pro leagues. Um, and uh, she worked for Tough Mudder twice. She uh, this is incredible. But okay, so I'll. Uh, I'll make sure that you're involved in her conversations with all this kind of stuff. Because she's she's on top of things. I also need you involved with uh, the conversations with the UI UX dev side of things. And awesome. uh, you know, I I think also I'll flip you some information about the people who we're planning on right now for development. And it's really they're building the whole Perfect. site. They're rebuilding everything onto ASP.NET, JavaScript, um, onto one of the clouds. I'm pushing toward the Google Cloud. Um, I think that some people have a little less experience with the Google Cloud versus AWS. And uh, I just, I have a feeling like that would be a better platform in the long run. Uh, yep. You know, they're buying everybody. They also have that DFP that they bought out five years ago or whatever. And that makes a lot of sense. So I, I like. Could you, I would love. Could you send me uh, again? I don't want to add to you. If you, could, if you could send me your, because I don't know the jargon. I don't know to, to, on the tech side. I, I know it enough to to be dangerous, but not to the same level. Kind of where you're at tech wise, and where you where you think you're going. What you just spit it off. Um, I love to sit down with a tech guy and say maybe Joe Lee's on and say, hey, these guys are thinking about doing X, and I love to see them do a brain dump on 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 that about um, where you're headed. And if there's anything that would be helpful in what they share about your direction, I'd love to, to kind of get them involved and kind of see if there's anything that can help on that too. That was my second question. I mean, what I, what I, I think we're getting a really good price with a company that really has done a lot of big sites. Okay. Uh, but I'll throw it up to bid if they can come in like someplace in the numbers. Exactly. I love, that's what I'm saying. The quick and dirty about where you think you want to head, the cloud-based stuff here, but AWS, I love to get, quick snapshot of where you want to go and then I can present that to them and they'll, uh, they'll shoot you something on that. Okay. So that's on, uh, it's in our, uh, uh, business plan, which I want to send you anyway, cause that has a logo on it. Perfect. So send it to me immediately. Perfect. And thank uh, you, man. Yeah. That'd be great. I love to, I'll dive right into that. Uh, this afternoon's a good day for that. I'll shoot, I'll shoot you that today. Cool. I'll send it right out to you. Gregory. Yeah. This is awesome, man. So any, any other questions for me? Um, I, would, I would say that the first, operationally, besides looking at everything and coming up with the lo new logos and that kind of stuff, um, yep. you know, let's find out who the people are in the, on the tech side of Crafts eSports thing. Because if I yep. can get a, some kind of involvement there mm -hmm. for our hype organization thing, yep. that'll go a long way. Okay. Um, All right. So uh, cool. even if it's just like an overview of what they're doing and what their tech stack looks like, yep. um, that'll help, help a lot with us knowing how we can improve on what they have for yep. not only them coming back with, as a provider to them, but also yep. for the next people who are doing the same kind of thing. Gotcha. Okay. I can so, set up an email. Let's, let's, okay, good. Yeah, send me, send me contracts, send me business plan, and I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. Awesome, bro. Thank you so much, Tony. I really appreciate it. It's going to be great working with you. Greg, you're awesome, man. Honestly, you keep, too, man. keep rolling, man. You too. Yeah, likewise, man. You're awesome. Same take here. care of yourself, too. I hope you're not going to burn into both ends, man. I got it. <laughs> I have no choice. Care. I got, <laughs> I've, got, I've got two months to do this uh, hype thing in a five <laughs> years sprint. I have no choice. This is, uh, I've been waiting for 15 I years. I hear you. Now. No, I told you. I totally hear you. I totally hear you. Now, now's the time. You could rest. You could rest later. Exactly. There you go. Plan on buying that villa in Tuscany in five years, right? Now uh, I gotta work my ass off. Now you're talking. Yeah. Now you're talking. All right, buddy. All right, man. I'll talk to you later. Have a good day. You too, man. Talk to you later. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.